And welcome back to Block TV to the segment we call Black Hats, evident from the squeaky music. Now, like any other ecosystem, the crypto space is the good, bad, and ugly. This segment is about the bad and the ugly. We sent and Whitney Deal, our intrepid correspondent, to ruck the muck of the industry with its various hacks, scams, and frauds. Lord knows there are some. She lived through to report on it. She's back here looking like an angel, Whitney. <laughs> What's the latest? Thank you, Yael. Bitcoin mining fraud. A 33-year-old man in the Netherlands has been arrested for Bitcoin mining fraud worth over 2 million euros. The Dutch Tax Authority's investigative department, the FIOD, announced on Monday that the man was a director of two private limited companies where he convinced around 100 people to buy computers for mining bitcoins that he most likely never purchased. The man is accused of fraud, forgery, and money laundering and used those funds to treat himself to luxury items such as cars, motorbikes, travel, and gambling. I'm very upset that I didn't meet him before he was incarcerated because he could have maybe paid off some of my student loans. Would have been nice. Yeah, just, I gotta tell you though, the thing that boggles my mind always about scammers and hackers is that you know they scam people and then get, they go out and buy the most flashy freaking thing. Right? Wouldn't you know you a Lamborghini? Say, like, I know it's you, man. Right? Wouldn't okay. you want to say under the radar? Bingo. And just Bingo. And pay your student loans. Put it into or put it into a Swiss account. I don't know. Something like that. But what do I know? Yes. Anyway, this is obviously not the first. And last time, someone has been or will be arrested for fraud of this nature. And it's also, well, it's also not the first or the last time someone will fall victim to an unscrupulous individual. Because just yesterday, it was reported that a BitGo, uh, sorry, a BitGo engineering manager had $100,000 stolen from his Coinbase account in a SIM swap attack. There are actually several mining scams to be aware of, so you don't fall prey to these predators. So let's run down a list of things to watch out for. First one being the hardware wallet theft. One scam to be wary of is um, hardware wallets with a pre-configured seed phrase hidden under scratch, a scratch card that can be compromised. You can Hackers can get in, steal everything that you have. Yep. Uh, the next is exchange scams. And despite their decentralized nature, most cryptocurrencies are still bought and sold at exchanges. Exchange scams are not hard to spot, with one of the biggest red flags being the promise of unrealistic prices. And we've seen so many of those happen. Those, I mean, exchange hack is something that happens almost once yep. a week. Um, very true. Yes. And, and also fake. these, uh, the next one, these fake ICOs. And the best way to avoid these scams is to really do your homework and research white papers and review the team and key board members and investors behind the venture before you decide to invest yourself. Yep. The next is cloud mining schemes. Beware of companies that make bold claims regarding their returns without being transparent about the true costs and diminishing returns. Others simply operate Ponzi schemes that can lead to massive losses. And then we have multi-level marketing schemes. Please. Or MLMs. They are- Because <laughs> everything needs to be initialed. <laughs> yes. Yes, okay. It just sounds cooler that it way. It does, it does, sounds creepy, yeah. They're predicated on offering quick returns, but actually involve taking more money for the promise of even higher profits. If ever there was a, you know, grifter scam, that's the grifter scam. Right. So yes, attention, right? That's so what we want. So to always pay attention to a company's fine print and ensure that their claims are feasible and real. Or, in other words, as I tell everybody, I know, honey, there is no such thing as easy money. There Never. really isn't. Never. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and? Uh, we also have terrorists and tokens. It's come as no big secret, but terrorist organizations are increasingly utilizing crypto as a means to attain weapons and services while evading security services and detection. According to several sources, including RAND and the Russian FSB, terror groups are increasingly being financed through cryptocurrencies. The head of the FSB said terrorist organizations have been mastering the use of virtual currencies for some time, along with encrypted communication tools, stating, electronic payment systems and cryptocurrencies are increasingly being used by terrorists to move money received from some states and organizations that support the global terrorist network. RAND's findings in their publication further backs these claims following research on fundraising, remittances, drugs, and arms trafficking among groups like Al-Qaeda, ISIS, Hezbollah, and some lone wolf attackers. They found that while no single cryptocurrency currently offers the six features terrorist groups need most in, in a currency, which is anonymity, usability, security, uh, acceptance, reliability, and volume, 
there's no indication that the groups are making use of cryptocurrencies in an extensive and sorry, there is evidence that they're using cryptocurrency in an extensive and systematic way. They also found that the ideal cryptocurrency for these organizations would look something like a cross between Bitcoin and Zcash that would ideally have Bitcoin's transaction volume and adoption and Zcash's yeah. anonymity. I mean, they've got it broken down. That's the thing. And one of the problem with this is, though, that they still have terrorism attached to cryptos or the attempt to funnel money for questionable groups with that. Either way, continue. Sorry. Which it just it creates a whole slew of problems exactly. for the people that aren't terrorists that want to you know, get involved in PR, crypto. PR, trust issues in the market, whatnot. Exactly. Yes. So this relative anonymity and ease of using crypto for nefarious means is on the rise. And it's just... It's, bad for everyone. No, it's bad for everyone. Um, but, um, you know, one can always argue that bad elements will be in any market. Um, True. And it's just a question is how we fight them in that. That exactly. said, diamonds. Diamonds and the SEC. Mm. Finally, the SEC is on our radar again, uh, but this time not for anything related to their inability to make a decision on ETFs. A recent report informs that the SEC has taken action against what, alleged, what it alleges is a $30 million cryptocurrency scam based around supposed diamond investments. In a press release on Tuesday, the commission alleged that defendant Jose Angel Aman operated a purported crypto business called Argyle Coin as a Ponzi scheme, fleecing over 300 investors by selling unregistered securities under two firms he owns called Natural Diamonds Investment Company and Eagle Financial Diamond Group Incorporated. Aman would use the investments from new recruits to return pay to previous investors, falsely promising them that the firms would invest in whole diamonds and cut down and sell for substantial profits. But really, he misused or appropriated over $10 million of investors' money. The SEC uh, said it is seeking repayment of allegedly ill-gotten gains and prejudgment interests, as well as financial penalties. Wow. I mean, as we just said uh, before, um, like the sphere needed any more bad headlines or anything coming like that coming through the SEC that is having such a hard time <laughs> accepting this as a new currency. Um, but mm -hmm. great job done on, you know, shedding a light on all these shenanigans, Whitney. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was Whitney Deal on Block TV. Black hats, what to avoid. But of course, Block TV is something you need to be on constantly. So check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Telegram. Uh, we're out there and we'll be right back.